Welcome to Liberate RVA Couch. Uh, we're your friendly neighborhood anarchists, talk about anything and everything on um, whatever questions, topics, or some film review, your views. Uh, this time we're going to talk about Deadpool, uh, comic books, uh, the art of trolling, I guess, since that's associated. And I guess from there we'll start off. Uh, what do you guys think of the movie? It was beautiful, tear jerking, and arousing. <laughs> And I've never been like a Deadpool follower. Though apparently when I'm drunk, I'm an expert. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I do not find Deadpool everywhere. Awesome portrayal of an amazing character. Loved Colossus, loved his little sidekick. A little weak on the villain, but who cares? The rest of the movie was just amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was uh, concerned whether or not, uh, uh, what's his name, the character that played uh, Deadpool? Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds will fuck it up because because uh, he's, he's always kind of his death was a sixth sense of humor and kind of uh, go, kind of goes all over the place and kind of psychotic and, and insane and um, but at the same time Ryan Reynolds has always been tied to cast as like a like, you know college jock you know school, yeah like, right it, um, Van Wilder right Van Wilder yeah, right like Van Wilder yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he was the one that pushed hardest for this movie back when it was in the finest and development stages. If it wasn't for him, we probably wouldn't have a Deadpool movie. We can say, well, if it wasn't yeah, for Wolverine, there'd be no Deadpool. Literally and fair. Because we were worried there was almost no Deadpool. It's terrible. Yeah, what was that in a Wolverine movie? <laughs> I'm they, glad. they made fun of that in the Deadpool. Right. Yeah. You know, they, they took a lot of awesome jokes out of the movie. I read about it. Yeah. Mainly because they were like, well, it might be interpreted as kind of racist, uh, or it was too much even for the Deadpool movie. Like they were, most, a lot of them were the jokes about uh, about the cancer face that he was uh, yeah. on, and they were hilarious. And that's I was like, oh, why did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> like, that seems like he's walk, when he's walking in the street and he's like super afraid that people are gonna look at him weird. I'm like, you live in a world where mutants like are known. People are gonna look at you and they're gonna be like, oh, okay, he looks weird or old. Or a bird victim, yeah. That's like, a strange. I think that was forced. Yeah. No, 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 I know what he does. I met anyone who kind of just stares. I met one person like uh, as a kid. Kids do that, right? In kindergarten, yeah. you kind of force them to go in there and the adult world keep reminding them of business, get a place to go. They don't, they don't have time to just yeah. stick around and gawk. They don't uh, care enough. Yeah. I mean, you know, he, he's kind of a narcissist, and so he thinks that, like, he was super beautiful, and he's like, no, I'm an ugly avocado. So maybe... <laughs> that is a fair point. You, you can't trust a narrator. That's always, a, that's always one thing you have to remember, so I guess maybe people weren't really staring, but maybe he was thinking people were staring when they weren't, and maybe he just kind of internalized that, and that's what we saw in his projections. Um, but at the same time, I guess, uh, him kind of looking ugly, but he's alive, right? He's. He's not dying. <laughs> he can go see his girlfriend again, Vanessa, a copycat. Uh, wife's with butter, then over Ajax. Mm. Right? Mm. He was going to die anyways. Yeah. He didn't have much, much long uh, to, to live anymore. Yeah. Alright? Oh, he made me look ugly, but thanks. I have healing factor. I can never die. I can be here forever now. Right? Oh, he's looking It wasn't like he wasn't. Yeah. They didn't say that this was going to lead to mutation. I mean, it was honest about what the results were going to possibly be. He saw one of the mutants in there with like crazy bones coming out of her back. Like, what do you think might happen to you, too? <laughs> I'm still going to be butthurt and mad about it afterwards. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, that felt kind of forced. Yeah, did they explain how much time he spent in the uh, in this in the center? Uh, they, like superpowered? Well, I guess he'd been gone for two years, so I don't know. Apparently, yeah. it, it was a while. Yeah, I yeah, didn't really get the ice bath thing, and like when they uh, maybe I missed it, but he was like in an ice bath, and they like did all this like torture. They subjected him to torture, as <coughs> opposed to like the serum crap they're putting through him. His mutations would manifest as protection against the trauma they were putting him through. Right. So his mini chlorine counts oh, cool. might uh, come out, is and uh, <laughs> that, that is, that's a really hilarious thing. But it's, it kind of reads through to a lot of uh, I guess the Marvel origins. Like a lot of the Celestials came and did a lot of scientific experiments and planted all these mutation genes, and eventually, kind of like uh, of antiviruses that protect the host of the planet from alien invasions, mutants will come out of that. And uh, use those powers to protect the planet because inside the planet there's a baby celestial gestating that eventually grows up. Okay, you just explained a lot of the plot that I did not know was yeah. in the plot. Which is why Galactus goes out there and eats planet because he's trying to eat these celestials and keep a balance in the universe. 
Um, so uh, crazy. So Origin of Deadpool, kind of different from the comic books. Um, they're actually different in uh, terms of ceiling factors, supposed to have come from Wolverine, uh, not to be manifested in the way uh, you're mentioning. Well, and, uh, Deadpool really came from Deathstroke, and made a very angry <laughs> <laughs> In the fictional world, you know. <laughs> That's very true. Uh, like, there's always like these uh, DC and comic book kind of similar kind of heroes out there. Uh, so Deadpool's kind of like one of them. So like in, in the origins, uh, yeah, Deadpool had a cancer wrap uh, inside his body and uh, went to the Weapon X program to kind of find a way to, to cure it. And they got uh, Wolverine's healing factor, put it in his body and tried to um, turn into, I guess, uh, a super assassin. Um, but the healing factor, though, did a weird thing to him, which caused the cancer to grow tremendously all across his body and ravage his entire face and, and everywhere. But at the same time, the healing factor is combating that and healing it at the same time. So he's dying and... So in Origins, he had the, the adamantium skeleton with the swords coming out, right? But that's not true. That's not true. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie. Right. The cake is a lie. So they really got that wrong. Yeah, that's why everyone was upset by that. Oh, okay. They even sewed his mouth shut in that one. It's like, this guy, is, he talks a lot. He's not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, anything. The only thing is he wasn't as crazy as he is in comics. Right, yeah. I mean, they, you look at it on the film and it's you know, this guy's a madman. It's actually, I'm curious where they go in the sequel because it's going to, be, I'm thinking it's going to be even more than that because all that cancer is supposed to be right up here and along with everywhere else. Right. Explain this cancer thing. So they kept the cancer so that he's constantly, I don't know. He's constantly that. dying and living at the same time. Right. So the cancer is ravaging his body and killing him, but his healing factor is healing him and stopping it, so it's a crazy... Why did they do that? Because like the doctor just didn't like well, it? Well, no, uh, I guess they can't, that's just what, can't cure cancer yet. Right, that's just what, how the healing factor oh, works. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. So it's it makes, renders him immortal. And you can grow his little, you know, strong hand and rub people's cheeks. <laughs> and then they're cut off. <laughs> uh, a couple things that I enjoyed about it was the Tarantino-esque, like, um, start out kind of in the middle of the film and then kind of work your way, like go back in time and then, not unlike like Spider-Man, right? You started out with Peter Parker and he's like, you know, it, it, it's, it's okay, but it starts a little flatter. I kind of like how it starts strong uh, in that aspect. And then also the, like the little jabs at like the Hollywood kind of film industry with opening credits, you know, <laughs> and, um, just like, yeah, I thought it was great. So it, it already kind of pulls you in. It's just like, wow, this is already going to be good. This right. is funny already. That's <laughs> tension. Can we not have any more Spider-Man, Peter Parker films? There's so many others. No more origins. We, we yeah, can't no, get any more Spider-Man. Let's give me Spider-Man or Miles Morales or something like that. I'm tired of Peter Parker. <laughs> or how about a Spider-Man and Deadpool crossover? I'm in. I'm just not Peter Parker. I'm in the original Spider-Man. Ultimates. Whatever. Oh. All right. All right. I love mean, yeah, that could be. That could be a cute couple. Possibly. I mean, Both were a mask. I mean, Spider-Man could definitely be the uh, Dom. He can tie him up on command. Didn't, uh, didn't you post a, uh, a picture of Spider-Man? Yeah. This? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like the thing about superhero movies is it's terrible when you start them at like the beginning because most people kind of have a who are going to watch it have this you know surface level knowledge of these people already. So they're like, oh, I know the origin already. And like, come on, we wanted to be Batman already. We wanted to be Spider-Man. Stop this shit. Right. Just jump into it. Uh, so I guess it's kind of great that we kind of do jump into it at the very beginning and then kind of try to release some of the... A little bit too much slow motion for my taste, but it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's another kind of like little gripe, but the CGI is so fantastic, like why not, you know? Colossus in there? So yeah. that, was, that, was, that was amazing! <laughs> Finally a real Russian Colossus! Uh, and, and his mannerisms, it's like, that's, that, that's from the comic book, sounds just like him, it's the, the, the way uh, he's always been depicted, not like in the other X-Men movies where he's just like, a, I don't know, a high school kid, he's, I have no idea where he's from, it's just that he's tall and metal. Quiet, armored. Huh? Quiet, armored. Yeah. That's basically it. <laughs> but the slow motion thing, sorry, just to reiterate, like, that was really cool how he was narrating through the slow motion. So it didn't, it wasn't totally like, you know, like 300. Is the slow motion, you know, film that gets really uh, yeah. taxed the most because it's just like ah, 
Spirit. 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 Spirit
But the kid had like a, a virus that was ravaging his body and he had to send it to the future to be cured. So that's why in the comic books you'll see Cable is a really old man with grizzly and uh, white hair. And this storyline that you're talking about is like X-Men like within the 21st century, right? Like it's yeah, their uh, story, they're, they're new storyline. Uh, this is uh, the old story like in uh, X-Factor from like in the 80s, I think. Or, oh, wow. Yeah. So they're going to be uh, back capable, but I guess it's not like they're going to be continuously. I don't know how they're going to work it out, I guess, in that case. Because if they're not going to connect the uh, Wolverine's healing factor with Deadpool's origins, they might change it with Cable. But, but his parents have always been Cyclops, though, his father, so they can't change that. Somewhere in the Emperor, Deadpool looks at the audience. Well, if you really want to know the origin story, read <laughs> issues 26 through 54 of X Factor from 1989. But we're not going to bother with that long explanation. I'm just going to say I'm going to kick this guy's ass. No, you're not said, it, but. Also, just stop. You guys stop. Get, ticker rises. Do you guys see the uh, Stanley uh, cameo? Um, <laughs> yes. 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 Or DJ. Yeah, it, it was DJ, DJ at the strip club. Yeah, club. I was like, yes, yeah. 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 It was like, all right, got it. I didn't finish it yet, so. Um, so coming from there, uh, you guys ever in, in collect your comic books? I have a few. I have a few. Yeah, yeah. And I, wa I read Walking Dead, but no, not a lot. So I was a, I'm a big uh, Conan the Barbarian fan. Nice. Like, like, Oh. Yeah, some of the greatest hits, like is the uh, you know, like the trade collections, but not every every month, not anything. All right, all right. I might have like three Neil Gaiman comics. There we go. Which I need to borrow because you can just like a manga. Um, <laughs> Ooh, There's yeah. no comic books. I really, I really like manga as well. I used to be the Naruto, and then I got bored of it. Oh man, the Full Metal Alchemist. That was all over Full Metal Alchemist. That was ridiculous. I have hundreds and hundreds. I stopped collecting when the storylines got a little too convoluted. It can't be, started to become like an episode of Friends, uh, <laughs> plot wise. And then, like, all of a sudden, Wolverine has a kid you never heard of. It's like, oh, oh my god, stop. I was like, what? Walking Dead does that a lot. Right? They space out. The, uh, the interesting. Song. Walking Dead? Yeah. Uh, Negan's supposed to be coming out now in The Walking Dead. That's going to be interesting. He's supposed to be like the most ruthless villain in uh, some comic book lore history. Very brutal guy. Like the Carol suicide is the biggest like kind of dramatic. Like it did drew it out. Of them. Uh, yeah, uh, I liked it, and then the far from it, and I walked away. <laughs> and the comics? Of people, no, and the uh, TV the show, series. The show, yeah. One thing too is bad. I want to bring up in the, in the comic books back then. They always had like a comic book code authority. You guys remember that? It's a little white symbol, right? Be on the comic book on the top right, bottom of the quarter, on a. Uh, white background, you know, rectangular will say comic book code authority. Uh, interestingly, that was created to, uh, back then in terms of comic books, to restrain and restrict writers' depiction of government authorities, not to be portrayed as bad or corrupt or... Um, Isn't it a little bit more even into like what types of comics they could write or what themes they could approach? Yeah, I guess in, in that sense. And uh, most of the underlying theme of that, you cannot depict uh, cops as uh, imbeciles or as a... Uh, Bumly idiots. It's like Alien Sedition Acts in comic books. Right, right. right. Huh. Uh, so, like, the cops can never be like uh, evil bad guys or anything like that. Uh, and so, that's interesting to me in the way in the depiction of like uh, controlling the children and people who kind of grow up with comic books. Difficult for them to see who the real enemies of liberty are uh, later on in their adult life. Comic books never, can't portray in that way. I'm hoping I'm not wrong when I say all this on history, but it was actually even more than that. Like, there were. Um Themes, the comics approach that were very much an adult thing, but um, you know, comics were seen by the government as something that's more kid, meant to be kids, kids friendly. And it was entire slices of comic book culture that was pushed under there. It wasn't just um, government figures, it was literally like what types of stories you could tell at all, mm -hmm. how you could portray violence, how you could portray interaction, who was the good guy, who was the bad guy, things like that. Um, Still giving people speak to veterans the same way the um, Hayes Code did it for movies. You know? yeah. Oh, okay. Um, you know, sex doesn't happen, babies manifest magically, you know, um, people never get divorced. It's, it's, your real life situations, you know, sheltered in a fantastical setting aren't something you have any basis to, like, you know, see how things can play out. You know? It was like you kind of had to get. This is the sort of life we want you to live. 
Imagine if you had to get your comic uh, approved by the local minister before it could be published. Mm -hmm. Because uh, anything else could be seditious and, um, or not seditious, but it could warp the uh, minds of the children that were reading. They don't do that with manga though, right? Manga's pretty, like, all over the place. I mean, that's imported from Japan. They have a little bit different rules. They wouldn't, I, I, based on Japanese culture, I wouldn't think they would have to there must tell be, them to censor themselves. Like they would just do it. There must be at least five tentacles, right? <laughs> that's there. I mean, I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't know what you read. <laughs> <laughs> wrong. Can I go out? Can I be published? When uh, did they get rid of that comic book authority, or when did that uh, stop being like, on a thing? Like maybe a little over a decade ago or something. So eventually they stopped. Mm -hmm. uh, for a long time, it was still very much in there. Was it kind of a slow erosion over time on what they allowed? I guess so. Yeah. And yeah. they're like finally just nope, we don't need it anymore. Right. It's probably about the time like with comic release, like George Carlin who does, did like Trying seven, to stuff, right? seven dirty words or whatever. Yes, he did. Yes. And once that censorship was eliminated. What were those words? It's like shit, fuck, cunt, motherfucker, <laughs> ass, and <laughs> piss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would expect that that authority would go away because of the internet. Because you don't need to go through an authority to properly oh, publish yeah. something. Right, that's a good, good, good point. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the post office back then, they were censoring anti-war literature. Uh, and wouldn't allow uh, any of that stuff to be mailed out. What, what years were that? Uh, I'd have to take a look and check back to it. It's like probably like near the... Uh, Vietnam War? Yeah, Vietnam War or something, or wow. Civil War. I'll, I'll take a look into that. Didn't they have like sex literature that wasn't, you know, yeah, in the were. 20s and 30s that they wouldn't allow being mailed around? Yeah, yeah. There's, uh, or anti-slavery literature, you know, a lot of uh, censorship going on to the post wow. office. That's interesting. Right. It's, uh, which is one of the planks of uh, communism, uh, centralization of the means of communication. So, Actually, I think the Chinese did a study. They compete with the post office. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they did a study on how they could use comic books to propagandize communism to their populace. And they, there's, a, there's actually a lot of like Maoist comics in China that like show like villains being capitalists. And like they're trying- Buy to this comic book to find out how. <laughs> <laughs> and and like, the heroes always save the day using communist ideals. Superman and Wonder Woman. Hitler. They're promoting the allied um, sensibilities and there was some Oh, yeah. characters, well, secrets. Yeah, if you're looking just, <laughs> just in the American comic books on evil capitalists, I mean Lex Luthor, um, depending on the um, depending on um, the series, Tony Stark, yeah, or any of his villains, you're looking at very capitalist ideas, and look how much trouble he causes for everything in the times when he's the bad guy. So mm -hmm. war coming up when he's in yeah. for uh, mutual registration. Yeah. Um, you know, Tony Stark isn't a great guy most of the time. And he's drunk, absolutely. And yeah. he sobers up and starts doing weird stuff. Here, Tony, have a drink. Oh, yeah, okay. it's just one of those things, you know, we don't always portray the communists as bad guys or the uh, capitalists as good guys. We're a little bit more, you know, sometimes it could be one or the other. Hell, even depending on the um, series, sometimes Lex Luthor's the good guy. Yeah, Iron Man did a great, great statement when he, the government was saying, well, we want your technology, we want your Iron suit. And he was like, no, fuck off. I <laughs> ain't getting anything. He's like, great. And now, I guess we'll find out. I guess we're doing a film review when uh, Civil War breaks out. Those guys are very much like the tick, you know, um, when they switch to the good oh, side. Yes, it's like, you know, tick. you can't blow up the world. That's where I keep all my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Luther. You saved the day. Love the tick. Love the tick. <laughs> now I have vulnerability. That's a good superpower. Mm. He was like, go ahead. We don't need any more of that here. <laughs> we have all the government we need. I always thought that uh, ability to, uh, like somebody had this, uh, his body or her body, they can, um, I guess, create alcohol inside, right? Uh, <laughs> they can uh, ferment oh, sugars. Oh, that's a real medical with me. Right, and then so they can get uh, inebriated and uh, get really drunk and get the hangover from it. Well, sometimes they're trying to figure it, but they get too much hangover, so they can eat anything like sugar in it, and the body will turn into alcohol, and they'll get drunk. And for a long time, they couldn't figure out why they were suffering so much pain until they kind of figured out the condition that they had. And uh, so for a while, I thought that'll be a, that, that's a cool superpower, you know, minus the <laughs> no. The reality, evidently, is that that is a really horrible medical condition to have. There is, it's not like partying. 
Professor, Professor X like, sorry, we can't use you. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I don't know. I want to go have some part, uh, go have some fun at the club, eat a few slices of bread when I get there and get drunk. It's more like um, a con. It comes out more as a constant hangover, and all the bad sides. Yeah, yeah, all yeah, the fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's your future power? I can get drunk whenever I feel like mm. it. Maybe it's like the cancer with Deadpool, and then like you have like an automatic recovery, like healing. <laughs> Are right, you know, came over recovery. <laughs> so you're just in a constant state of like that perfect drunken mode. <laughs> That's why Wolverine has to drink a lot to get a state of uh, inebriation because his healing factor kind of combats against it. So he has to drink like whole bottles mm -hmm. to get through it. So I guess that's the downside of having a healing factor. Um, Andre yeah. Vagina had that problem too. Yeah. <laughs> drink an awful amount just to get buzzed. It was actually kind of a toll on his finances. Wow. Oh, just give me the top shelf. Oh, no, 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 all of it. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you guys think about the, the ethics then, like you find in comic books? Um, mm -hmm. Who would be, uh, I guess, in terms of uh, like the, the way that they champion good versus evil, there's the X-Men versus the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants um, that they're kind of putting out there. And uh, you have, uh, I guess, an interesting case of Captain America finally realizing that maybe he's done fucked up and was choosing the wrong team. And he's realizing Shield has been kind of doing the same thing as Hydra has done themselves and following kind of being suspicious of it all. Following orders and not questioning. I mean, I feel like for a lot of superheroes, since they don't, they try, they try really hard to like not kill the villains that they're after. It's still that you don't, you don't ever bring up the question of, oh, should you? At the ethical question, oh, should you kill people who are bad? But they still, they never, they never, they never ask the question of should you be following these orders? Like, well, why do you have to do it this way? You know, they cause so much damage <laughs> to so, the cities that they are in whenever so, they do anything. I was gonna say, so something that kind of bothers me in comic books is like the fact that you throw in jail, or you know, there's, it's not like direct restitution to the victim. You know, it's kind of like they. they is like a, was it Batman that they throw in jail or something like that or that's it? Yeah. I mean, they throw that, in jail. That, that's that's it. You know, you go if you're uh, you know if you're in the Batman universe and you go to jail, well, you could join a Suicide Squad and uh, get out early. Right. <laughs> yeah. That would be good, yeah. <laughs> well, has anybody seen the? Um, it's on HBO on demand right now. Um, they've got the uh, Batman animated movies that they put out recently. Uh, one of them is like the Dark Knight Two. It's showing like, you know, the old Batman. Um, and one of the things, one of the plots in there is, you know, the Joker gets out again. And yeah. their last interaction, you know, here he's killed, the Joker's killed, 600, 700 people confirmed. Mm -hmm. And then here's another two or 300. And the challenge he keeps having to Batman is, why don't you just kill me? He can't decide. He to and the thing is, Batman just... captures him. He goes back into, the, into wherever. He gets thing. back out, racks up another death toll. But it's, well, see, how does that? That's what my question is. Like, well, how does the victims ever get you know help from that? Like, okay, yeah, you captured him. You put him in jail, into a stage jail, and the victims ever get right. And the victims ever get any kind of. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. You're pretty much just letting uh, the murder go out there to do it again. Yeah. Okay. It's the police option for the land. And so yeah. the thing yeah. is, like, superheroes by their very nature are vigilantes. They are not working within the law. There is not that there law for them. They have whatever little code they run with. Yeah. But what point, you know, some of them that really does seem like they push that code way past whoever they're trying to protect. That was the problem in the comic book series Kingdom Come and Joker just killing people again and people just getting tired of, uh, of this happening and this one upstar superhero comes in and just finally kills the Joker just leaving court and everyone's uh, like great oh my god you're awesome and then uh, socially ostracized uh, Superman out of society because they're tired of him just you know, capturing people, putting them in the jail, like, dude, motherfucker, just, just do what you need to do. He's yeah. got the laser eyes, man. You right? don't need to fight him. Ding, done. All right. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's, that's an interesting point because uh, these stories just continue over and over and over again. Batman, for all his wealth, just goes after Band Aid Solutions, capturing these bad guys, five of them, and five more will come in and replace them instead of. I guess comic book authority in the past couldn't really focus on the real <laughs> like comedy not creating these problems, government itself. All this mafia and drug war activity and stuff like that, 
uh, yeah, government created. You know, fight that. Fight the real evil. Fight the real organization of Americans the there. Yeah, so if there's no government, you're still going to have people fighting for, um, you know, whatever aspect of the street they're going to want to sell their drugs on. It's still going to be competition. They're still going to be pulling guns. Wait, uh, we're going to drug? Are you saying without drug war, there will still be. If there is something that. I don't know. Tangent thought. Okay. Something going to be approached later. Yeah, but, but, but the thing is, without a drug war, uh, artificial prices of drugs uh, drop dramatically. So the demand for that is, is it's gone. Uh, the reason why there's a lot of violence right now with drugs is because arbitration is illegal. Their drugs is illegal, so they can't. Uh, they have a conflict dispute with someone. They cannot resolve it because yeah. it's illegal to do that. So that's why there's a lot of street violence in terms of that. Um, but I mean, this is not drugs. It could be something. You know, it's, there's always going to be that. But then, then, then that would mean, in a real free society, you have real security services that have an obligation, contractual relationship to protect your life, liberty, and property. Mm. Uh, so like in the comic book world, you know, yeah, it's great that these vigilantes, these superheroes are doing something about it to protect people because government can't mm. uh, protect people. Uh, sure. The Supreme Court uh, has ruled in many cases. Can't even keep drugs out of prison. Right, yeah, can't even keep drugs out of prison. <laughs> yeah, totally. The most like secure environment you can imagine. Right. Is it that secure? Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so the Supreme Court cases have ruled that there is no obligation to protect your life, liberty, property. Government doesn't have that. So yeah, great for superheroes going out there to provide security and uh, bad for the continuing indoctrination that kind of grew up there and believing that they're here to protect us because it leaves us vulnerable. It's a uh, very, very hard thing to do to make us think that we are secure, but we're not. So that's an interesting thing to bring up too. So I know like in the Batman universe and Superman universe, uh, like the police don't really like the superheroes either. They, they, they're at risk of getting caught themselves because of the damage they cause. Like they see, I know they're seen as uh, not being, they're like, how do you say, uh, illegitimate authorities or illegitimate rulers <laughs> of power. So they, you know, the police department's kind of like, hey, like, why, why, we, we can stop them. Like they're enforcing rules and we're not enforcing those rules. So right. Just, because they're they're more than once, they're an anarchist. Yeah. <laughs> well, on the other side, I mean, the Superman goes and gets into a fight with somebody. Uh, how many lives just got absolutely destroyed when he went through a building and the building collapsed? Not to mention the ten or fifteen behind him. The um, all the uh, infrastructure. Every time they go slamming down into the uh, ground, you have the craters and you have the broken pipes and all of this stuff. Two superheroes go at it. The re the actual results afterwards are going to be traumatic to a monstrous amount of people. If anything, what surprised me is that there's anybody likes them. Yes, yeah. any superhero insurance. It's why they, that's, that's why they wear masks. Mm. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess who's going to stop Superman anyway? I guess Batman, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to that one actually. All right, what do you guys think of that? But Batman has a. Um, uh, he has a piece of crypt. He has a piece of kryptonite that uh, Superman gave in case he needed to take him down. Right. Right. Yes. It's, it's, yeah. Batman always has like a folder and everyone in case the Justice League goes berserk. Well, look, you can laser at him from like a couple miles away, so then the kryptonite has no effect. But you know, of course, then you couldn't make a movie about. I'm sure Batman would know. Batman's got like a reflective suit. Yeah, Batman would put a hologram, trick Superman into laserizing that, and then actually get him from behind with the the green arrow and just. Sure. Batman's too much of a he's too much of a survivor and he thinks he thinks about his situation enough that oh edge to Batman. Yeah. If it wasn't Ben F like now I'm cheering for Superman. Yeah, Batman always prepares, always sets it up. I think mean, uh, I hate Superman as a hero. He's just <laughs> <laughs> He's also he's, he's smart too. He's not just Truth, justice in the American way. Red white I mean, you know, the red and really, blue. He's really lazy red. I mean it was like one of the first Superheroes. So yeah. Like, they didn't have much creativity. You guys uh, ever read the, uh, heard about what if Superman uh, landed and. Uh, six hours. Six hours. Yes, I read that one. That was actually pretty good. Like, he grows, he's a Russian, and Lex Luthor is like an American champion. Right, he's like the Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> but better, because he, like, he's like a good, he's like such a math loser that like in six minutes he like balances the, the, nation, the economy of like the nation. It's, like, Oh, I figure how to turn our debt into like a surplus in right. six minutes. You go, you go, <laughs> six minutes. and like you government idiot, you guys are government idiots. 
Sounds about right. right. Yeah. yeah. He does that in that comic book. Super, <laughs> Superman becomes a champion of communism and helps the whole world turns communist. And uh, he's the leader of the communist uh, regime now. Doesn't want to force them to uh, USA. They let them collapse economically and then we'll take over. Um, but then Lex <laughs> Luthor, Lex Luthor plans this like 60 year long strategy to eventually kill Superman. It took him years to kind of figure it out and then he got it. And then it just took him 60 years to do it. And that involved uh, the United States becoming this economic powerhouse and it's not going to collapse and Superman getting upset and then just egging him on. And, um, eventually uh, goading him and uh, to try uh, to destroy them. And it was very tricky and crafty in the, in the way he, he stops him altogether and make him leave. There was a Batman attempt to stop him too, but that was a Russian Batman. <laughs> but back to Takoro's point when he brought up, Larry, like superheroes just automatically defer to the justice system to take care of criminals, right? Like it's, oh, they're going to do a great job. Just mm. Spider-Man, like tie him up with your web and let the police take care yeah. of all those baddies. Right. It's in the universe. But um, what does Deadpool do to address that? Deadpool's a, Deadpool's a mercenary. He, just he doesn't kind of whack him. He just takes him out. He's done. He's like, well, problem solved. I'm not trying to make justice, though. He just kills him for fun, really. Or he he, hates them. I think he, he gets a little. That's right. He's, he's an anti hero. Yeah. Uh, not essentially a, a hero like Captain America or Batman or one Tony one. <clears throat> he has a weird sense of. Uh, but the Joker is like that too, in a way, where he takes out politicians. <laughs> so, yeah, like, yeah, but it goes after peaceful people. I don't know if Deadpool actually goes after that. I think he just goes after criminal gangs, people who attempt to try to shoot at him or hurt him. And I don't, I'm not going to advocate killing people. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen like, Deadpool shoot a kid, right? I think uh, he's like Leon the Professional, no women, no, well, no kids. <laughs> because he shoots that girl. It's like, so is it sexist to shoot her or not? Shoot? Where a pizza girl yeah. died. That was something Jet brought up. Or that might have been a uh, Find Your Bob incident. But Deadpool definitely doesn't seem to mind if um, people are killed in the periphery as long as they're as long as they could pose a threat to them. Right. Like anybody in the organization, you know, can be killed with, you know, extreme prejudice and a lot of flair to it. Um, it's like you are your profession. Which I guess I mean the setup, the employment he had when the movie started, I mean that was that was still very much, you know, um, if the price is right, they've actually done something to deserve it. Right. <laughs> it was, I don't know if it's non-aggression or sort of like a a deferential defense type thing. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, it seemed like a defense thing with, for protecting the, this girls' school or something like that. Uh, orphan, oh, the uh, school for wayward girls was the name of the bar. I think. Oh, it was oh really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, this mixes me up because like, there's a, there's a little girl. <laughs> Who's uh, having problems with the stalker? Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I guess uh, in that profession, um, yeah, I don't know exactly. A lot of people are trying to figure out where he the lies, but he seems to be more like an anti-hero, like Wolverine. Wolverine will kill people too, um, not but he, but not uh, indiscriminately, trying to find a justified reason. Punisher is just like that too. Punisher will just mow down criminals. Yeah, yeah, no time for. Well, I'm going to handcuff you and take you over to this criminal organization called Terrorism. It's like, no, 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 here's justice. Done. We're going to reform you. You've been, you've been punished. <laughs> I've got a question though. You know, when you when y'all talk with uh, Wolverine and Deadpool, well, they kill all the people that are possibly a threat. Punisher, you're a guy in a maybe um, in a beat up old t-shirt, a um, bulletproof vest, and you've got guns, but you're human. Okay, anyone can possibly be a threat. Wolverine and Deadpool both have entire series of comic books that are devoted to them actually trying to find something that to kill themselves with. Whether it's the uh, weird sword in Japan for Wolverine or whatever it was for Deadpool so that he can finally meet Lady Death. Who is going, what can possibly be a threat to these people? You can't shoot them. You cut something off, it's going to grow back. Franklin so, Richards can well, make them disappear. Yeah, they, can, they can still feel pain. Yeah, it but... Pain can be a threat if you can be continuously put into pain. But even then, I figure once you've been shot for about the 10,000th time, it's there's got to be a point that it's like tattoo. You just get used to it. I guess it's kind of, I feel like it's kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah, but the point being, you're not, you're, none of these people can possibly threaten their lives. So yeah. this whole, well, they're just killing to defend themselves. No, they're not. They're not unkillable, unhurtable, frankly. But that doesn't deal with me. You can threaten someone. 
Like, you, you see him break his wrists and his arms and his And legs. he's like, whatever, ha 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 ha. Yeah, but he, he obviously still feels the pain. He's like, oh, And that's man. after a year of that with uh, Logan. I mean, you're talking what? Um, Civil War, if not before that. Um, Deadpool, and now, you know, if you look in comics, 20, 30 years, uh, 10, 15 years. Nothing's going to be a threat to these people. What? So they're killing just because they can. There's no defense. Well, I think uh, the thing is defense of yourself and others. And these people are, are initiating force against him to violate his consent and to attempt to murder him. Then that's the same. What must not stop them from doing that to other people? Mm. So you know, end the threat before it continues to grow. Like the Joker, right? Uh, not killing him. Uh, this, this murder has murdered uh, hundreds of pieces of people. Will continues to do that. Will always find a way out. Mm. Put it into that, right? Uh, at some point, or um, constrain him, restrain him, put him out in, in a real, I don't know, put him, put him on the moon. <laughs> I mean, we saw what they did with Magneto and the X-Men. They put him, in a, they put him under the Pentagon, like in this entire huge plastic castle. Oh, and Magneto and the Brotherhood, that's an interesting one. Okay, let's start on it. Oh, so um, um, Basically, uh, Professor X has the uh, side of the units that want to work with humanity, work with government, and be accepted. Um, Magneto is the side that he has watched uh, mutants get crucified and burned alive simply right. because of this discrimination, sentinels, government programs, control, etc. Where he wants to uh, basically have mutants be able to govern themselves or live themselves without being under government purview. With the catch being that his uh, methods tend to be extraordinarily extreme. He wants a uh, worldwide uh, Magneto land. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Depending on the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so he wants to be a dictator. Uh, actually, in some like, actually in the oh, comic the books of the mutants, mutants yeah. well, he tries to create a like Genosha um, right. places where mutants can come there and live peacefully. But like, it, it always turns out that he's got a something else happening behind the scenes of him trying to do, trying to like get rid of people who are against him or whatnot. So it does become kind of dictatorship in, in itself at the end. Basically, if you're Professor X and I'm um, Magneto, and Herzon is uh, the one sitting there that doesn't like mutants, you're going to be sitting there trying to convince him that no, it's okay. We can uh, coexist. Or I'm going to look at him and uh, rip all the iron out of his um, blood because he just threatened to kill somebody. Or, you know, impersonate them. Yeah. I mean, I mm-hmm. guess that is something we could take away from Wolverine or Deadpool. So taking away the freedom, which is, you know. Do you have a movie ETA on when you'll be done? Probably. Uh, it'll be in about 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask you what you guys are doing? Uh, we're talking about the Deadpool movie. Oh my gosh, it's so good, right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you too. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was everything it should have been. Right. And I was like, oh, I was not expecting to be that good. You did a great job. Used him. It was perfect. Right? Anyway. So, if you liked it, give it a bit of joy. Next time. Maybe next time. <laughs> right. But I will say it was fabulous. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually thinking about seeing it again today. Right? <laughs> what would Deadpool do? Watch it twice. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good uh, ending too with the movie with Deadpool coming in at the very at the very end. People kind of expecting for a uh, like uh, an Easter egg scene right after the credits. And it's like it comes out of the shot. It's like, what are you guys doing? Get the hell out of here! <laughs> <laughs> you guys are sitting around. Like, what's Ferris Bueller the first Easter egg like that? I have no idea. I have like, no history idea. History of that was the first. <laughs> the first are important. I like how it's, a, it's just like a big fuck you to the audience. Like, come on, go away, leave. All right. Like, what are you doing? Go live your life. <laughs> so he's a so he's a good troll. I would say, would say, right? Uh, in terms of like, uh, I guess he trolls his enemies, especially Francis. Even Francis. though Francis oh, yeah. is like giving him <laughs> pain for like these two years, he's like, do you remember my name? Francis. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah, so you can say Deadpool, I guess, in terms of the internet, it's like Reddit, 4chan, Rhino.com, all place mixed into one. In terms of, uh, I guess, the embodiment of what is Deadpool. It's a sea of piss. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I had a lot of fun watching it. I was very impressed uh, by the actor then and, uh, and everything that came out of that. 
Um, I guess the next one movie that's going to come out that's going to be of interest would be that yeah, Superman vs. Batman 1 and see how far that takes. Um, and Marvel Civil War. This is like a great year for comic book movies, it kind of seems like it. Um, I guess we have uh, Walking Dead coming out now. I guess maybe that'd be a good one to kind of go over and talk about. Yeah. Negan, because Negan seems to be one of those characters like, look, this guy's a visible threat. He, he definitely has no problem murdering peace with people, just snipe a rifle, take him out. Yeah, yeah I mean, you brought up ethics and comic books, and I can only comment on Walking Dead, but earlier in the storyline, when they're taking over the prison, they had these other prisoners that they were willing to share with, but at some point the prisoners were like, no, we want to kick you out. But then a horde comes and attacks, and in the middle of the attack, Rick kills the guy that's threatening them. Just bam. Yeah. He had no problem then. But later on, Why are you waiting? he's all conflicted with Negan, which is a much more a greater threat, and right. then the same with Governor. So there's there's a lot of back and forth going on with Rick's character, and it's, just, it's a little inconsistency, but it's it's order, I think it's I more in order to draw the storyline out. I feel like it's consistent with his background, though. I mean, maybe because of his police training, he doesn't have, he doesn't think of it in the same way he thinks of like people who aren't prisoners. It might be, you know, that psychological thing might play into it. Oh, it's coming. Game of Thrones is coming too. Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should do all of them. I just caught up to the book, so from here out, it's finally something that as a reader, I don't know what's going to happen next. So you think that book's going to appear in uh, Civil War or other X Men movies? Um, I'd see it in Civil War. I don't see it in Age of Apocalypse. Oh, yeah, it's kind of too late for that one, I guess. Um, That's going to be interesting. The um, but then the they already have Spider-Man uh, coming in on Civil War, I believe. Yeah, that, that's going to be pretty cool. He can swing around his, the one building in like the middle of a cornfield. Right, there he is. That's, I saw him in the background. <laughs> I saw some webbing in there. They pulled Iron Man left behind. Uh, the Apocalypse movie, the new one, is going to be interesting. It's uh, The villain's going to be... Uh, remember the bad guy from the Power Rangers? Uh, uh, the purple guy? <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they found the costume in storage. Yeah. <laughs> what do we got? Oh, okay, yeah, this makes sense. Ooze, that was his name. <laughs> when the cosplayer can do a better job than the, right? your makeup department, there is an issue with your movie. I saw the Yellow Ranger at the Comic Con here in Richmond. Uh, really? Yeah, like two weekends ago. Uh, so he was there and just looking fabulous and just taking pictures with everyone. <laughs> and somebody came in dressed as Rita. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, there was a track movie. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Approaching her table and, and she just spun around. <laughs> Did they start fighting or anything? No, no, they're just like bad mouthing each other. <laughs> 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 still alive, alive and kicking. It's morphin' time. <laughs> There's actually like a kind of a revival going on with kids in Japan right now. Um, of like. They look just like Power Rangers, but they're called something else. I can't think of it. But my, my nephew's option. So. All right. So uh, let's wrap up with saying, uh, what superpower would you have if you could choose? Oh gosh! <laughs> you put me on the spot first. Um. Honestly, persuasiveness. Persuasiveness. That's. Who? What super mutant would that be? Well, I guess it would be kind of like Longshot. Longshot has an ability with, uh, to manipulate luck around him, to always kind of probabilities fall in his favor. Sure. All right, so Longshot. Sure. <laughs> like uh, Domino does the same, has the same power. As long as he moves, bullets won't hit her because he moves in the like 1% probability of outcome that always falls in her favor. So she can dodge and weep, but as long as he's proactive. Uh, so yeah, I guess kind of follows the same thing. Kind of like I guess in Fallout Four, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, you know what? A deal for a hundred thousand dollars, hundred thousand coins. You're gonna have to give me for that cup, right? Oh, you yeah. want it? That sounds rational. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I've always been drawn to Cyclops. It's just like it. it Piss me off and pfft, you know, like everything in front of you is just gone. And, uh, What's that? Oh, nothing? Okay. It's just like, I can just you know, completely level the entire place if I want to. And just piss me off once. Like, and I guess like the shooting thing too. So, I don't know, projectiles. Some sort of projectile power. Would well, you have to wear uh, Ruby Quartz glasses or can you just add will like Superman? Yes. Yeah, maybe more at will. Right? <laughs> I can't find my glasses. <laughs> 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 or 
Or you can have like Ruby Core contact lens. Why didn't they ever make that? That's so much easier, right? Duh. <laughs> Maybe Google will figure that out. They're doing the, the Google Glasses contact lenses, so they probably works. All right. <laughs> they no longer have to suffer Cyclops. <laughs> you? Yeah. Um, I'd probably like the highlighter power. Or I, if I can't, if that's not a comic book thing. But if I did have to have a comic book one, I would be Agent Orange from the, from the Green Lantern series. Because there's only one of that guy. He doesn't subscribe to like the authority, like the Green Lantern Corps, the Blue Lantern Corps, and he's not like super angry like the Red Lantern, like the Red, the Red guys. Like, the Agent Orange is super greedy. He's the only one. He has all the power. <laughs> he's like, yes, what's his weakness? Right. They always have a weakness. Is it still pieces of wood? What? What is this? I don't know his weakness, but I would have his power. That's black. Mm. Oh, it's all mine. <laughs> Like that, I guess mine would be uh, nine vulnerability. Uh, I guess tick is uh, immortal, right? So I'll, I never want to die. I want to uh, live uh, forever. There's so much to learn, so much to read, so much to do, so much to explore, and yeah, um, immortality. That was like that's always been my super part thing. So I was like a kid. I want to one day be an immortal. <laughs> and I always so, have money in my pockets. Yeah. <laughs> um. I think teleportation more than anything else. Oh, I awesome. think um, Something else, especially if I could go more long distance. Now, if I was going to pick a superhero world to have that in. Small shout out to something a lot of people don't read. Uh, Wild Cards by George Martin. Same guy that does Game of Thrones. Does a superhero anthology that's worth checking out. Hmm. But no, teleportation. Too much fun. Too much fun. Oh. Nightcrawler becomes beast with that, because uh, he could just yeah. teleport behind you, grab your head, and teleport, and your head comes right off. Plus, if every time they have a teleporter in a movie, that's going to be like my favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it becomes dangerous in like uh, Age of Apocalypse storyline. Just this teleporting people's limbs off. It's ridiculous. What else can you imagine? You're just in the mood for sushi. Yeah, I'll be back. Go to Japan. All right, and he did this crazy thing where he was like uh, trapped on an island and he just teleports across the ocean, just teleports really high, falls down, teleports really high, falls down, and just moves all across like the Pacific Ocean that way, just until he finally reaches real land. That's that's great. That's a good power. Oh, so he falls, teleports, goes. Immortality is pretty sweet. Um, I I guess it's the the teenage introvert talking, but invisibility would be nice. And, mm -hmm. I mean, for it to be absolutely effective, I'd have to walk around naked while I'm invisible, but... <laughs> Not like, uh, Inventor Brothers? <laughs> or your skin yeah, is small. Skin. <laughs> <laughs> your organs don't show. It's the invisible ball. Ah, it's like the devil. It's like, what's your power? Ha ha, damn it. <laughs> and if I wanted to, like, shoplift anything, I'd have to stick it in my mouth or in my butt. Right? Uh, what's that walking around? <laughs> <laughs> but it would just be nice to go places, like sneak into anywhere. I guess freedom of movement is what it boils down to, you know. Hmm. Susie Storm then. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, um, well, you like crack.com as well, and your teleportation mm -hmm. goes into this, but they broke down, you know, what is the most practical superpower without some unforeseen setback, like, you know, flying, you know, you land hard, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. But they said it was the Zach Galifianakis timeout from Saved by the Bell, which I wasn't familiar with until I saw this, but essentially somebody who can freeze time and while it's frozen, alter their surroundings. So, you know, a, a sneaky bastard superpower, basically. That's Quicksilver, then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess it doesn't move so fast. Yeah, yeah. Like everything yeah. slowed down in motion, you just rearrange things. Uh, that was like the best <laughs> scene in that X-Men movie. Yeah. Uh, uh, right? That's... That's, that's pretty that's intense. And Derek. Okay, so I was that kid that when they would go around and do that question, I'd always be the kid that was like, I want the power to have all the powers, right? <laughs> now, that's not, that's, not, you know, that's not a fair answer, right? And they'd be like, that's against the rules. So, when, you know, when I was a kid, I thought long and hard, how can I get that power to have the powers without breaking the rules? Turns out, shape-shifting is the answer. Or being uh, the most powerful genie in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you can have the rogue ability, absorb other people's powers. God, that has to do work, you see. If I can shape-shift, I can just shape-shift into a version of myself that, you know, has the power, the power that you want. Yeah. You could just I don't know, touch okay. the person who can I don't know if you should. But that takes a lot of time. I have to go find them. I have to say, hey, give me a handshake or something. Like, maybe they don't want me to touch 
touch them. You know? I don't think Mystic, uh, like Mystique though, she doesn't have the powers of the people that she shapeshifts into mm -hmm. though. Mm -hmm. uh, like the, she tries to create the adamantium claws, but they break off with real adamantium claws, they, they hit it. Um, I don't know who would, who would that be then that absorbs it. Absorbing that? Uh, I guess it would be kind so of like I just think of uh, Rogue more than anything and right. Marvel. Yeah, and, Marvel. and doesn't they have the, you know, the parasite doesn't absorb powers, he just absorbs energy. Rogue got a power in, DC. in the very beginning, she was just, she never has superhuman strength or flying ability or anything like that. She just got a hold of Miss Marvel. Her mother was Mystique and told her to never let go and just put her into a coma state. Uh, for the rest of her life and took Miss Marvel's flying ability and superhuman strength ability. Um, so, Rogue? What's your, what, what character would have, does that? I'm looking it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I guess actually the best superpower um, in the Marvel comic book universe that could be any character, including DC, is Franklin Richards. He's an Omega mutant. He can create anything with his mind and make you disappear and blink of his eye. He creates pocket universes, like uh, when he was a kid in this room. Uh, well, he was in the movie, one of the movies, right? Uh, I don't think was so. Was there some child, was it Origins? Uh, I guess it's kind of like him, but this guy, but this guy is just beyond everything. He, like this, he is the only person that the Celestials, those big, huge uh, beings like in the galaxy, a Guardians of the Galaxy in the very beginning, those huge robots that can destroy planets. He's the only person that they're afraid of. And uh, there's one time where they were attacking him and he was like 10 years old and they shot this super heavy beam at him. He just turned him into flowers. <laughs> Rose petals. Um, and he can just make him disappear and teleport him away. So he's like God? He's like God, yeah. He can do anything he wants. And he's the son of Franklin Richards and Sue uh, Richards. Uh, so fantastic four guys. Oh. Um, most powerful being ever. So yeah, most dangerous too, and you can just blink Superman away if you wanted to. So that, if you want to say you want to have the most powerful what, uh, superpower, it's him. I don't <laughs> think that'd be a good thing for any of us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, blink. <laughs> yeah, his name it's is, not. His name is uh, Franklin Richards. His father is Reed Richards. Uh, Mom is uh, Susan. Kind of like Doctor Manhattan, you can control matter. Right? right, just like right, right. Yeah. Um, oh, man, that's another yeah, choice. yeah, just like Dark Manhattan. Yeah, this guy can just rearrange things with the uh, rearranged Adam and create whatever he wants. Um, and for when he grew up, when he was a kid, though, his, his parents put like this uh, device on him or, or like mental blocks to prevent him from going from like playing around with too much stuff out there, pulling back his power. Um, but yeah, um, when people bring up the debate who would win, who, who's the most dangerous, I would just bring him up. It's like, pff, gone. <laughs> and again, let's see, we have um, Persuasion, so we can look at this from the villain. We have Indigo Man. Immortality, that would be what, Vandal Savage? What was your power? Agent Orange. Uh, Which is already evil. Yeah. What was your power? Uh, projectiles. <laughs> Which is <laughs> like, uh, um, yeah, I can definitely come up oh, with some bad guys. Thanos has all the power of the universe. Mm -hmm. All of has to go. We have Thanos yeah. and... Um, Evil Nightcrawler and some and Invisible Assassin. Yeah. Invisible Man one the old. Works over. There you go. So I guess you'd have to be Franklin Richards to have all the powers. Alright. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, thanks for coming guys. Uh, let's do this again and uh, do another movie film review critique uh, for the next one coming up. I guess when's uh, Batman and Superman coming out? Is that it? A month or so. A month or so. Cool. Yeah, let's do that or pick other topics. If you guys enjoy this, if you guys have a movie or anything like that you want us to go over, uh, please put it in the comment sections below. Uh, with that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and see you guys at the victory party. Take good care. Responsibility, yes, it's still a home.
should know by now that the system is designed for our demise. If we ain't right, we'll be left behind. Dollar signs rule. But what about the fool who falls victim to the material world?